Rhino Charge competitors are about to see how far they can push the limits of car and man. Out of these 62 teams, a few will roll their cars. Many will have breakdowns and some will just give up as they compete in the world's wildest competition that pushes man and car to the extreme in a conservation effort like no other. The Rhino Charge event has become synonymous with a special form of Kenyan madness and determination. For the past 23 years, these men, women and their machines have raised millions to build the Aberdare Mountain Ecosystem Electric Fence, which now protects one of Kenya's most critical water towers. The 400-kilometer Aberdare Fence was completed in 2009. The Aberdares is one of five main water towers in Kenya that must urgently be protected. The term water tower literally means a mountain or mountain range that attracts and generates rainfall and is the source of rivers and lakes. Kenya's water towers provide most of the freshwater resources for the entire country. Mount Kenya, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and Mount Eburu, part of the Mao complex, are the next to be fenced. 2012 launched the start of both fence lines, which will take about five years to construct. And it's up to the charges to come up with millions needed to build them. Every year, the Rhino Charge is held in a new location at the beginning of June. This year, it's Ilingwesi in northern Kenya, a remote place known for its elephant herds and rough terrain. The teams have arrived and convened for scrutineering where cars are fitted with GPSs and inspected by officials for safety. Some volunteer officials have been part of the charge for over two decades. As an official, it requires dedication, a sense of purpose, a team which is single-minded, good leadership, and the ability to find these fantastic places. Every one of these guys comes out here would never ever have come to this area had he not been invited or been taken part in, in a rhino charge. Every team must raise a substantial amount of money to even enter the charge, and spaces are limited. The money pledged goes directly to Rhino Ark and the building and maintenance of the fences. Each year, the variety of cars are as diverse as the team members themselves. From the super masculine to the ultra feminine. The lady cows and cows. He's got a steel heart. You can see the heart. He's got a steel heart. <laughs> what more do you want? He's the strongest of us all. He's been doing it for what, 23 years now? 21 years. 21 years. Yeah, and I'm trying to get a green card. <laughs> so I figured I'd join up, you know, Team USA and, you know, slide in under the radar. Because we've got the smallest and the lightest car. And a nice old Suzuki which no one else has entered. Cars are entered by a class as either modified or unmodified. The decision between going modified or unmodified is different for every team. Um, it is unmodified. I don't know, I think part of the charge is that it's unmodified. I think if it was modified, then it would, it would make the charge a different sort of game. There are definitely different types of cars in this, and um, we're taking it back to the roots. I don't know, I think um, you look at all these cars around, I mean, there's some really serious machines. I mean, ours is, we sort of put our car together as like a family, and I think this, the, the strength of our team is the teamwork more than anything. I think we've got a really capable car, but I think in this event, so much of it comes down to experience. I think this day and age now, it's getting harder and harder. You need a slightly modified vehicle, to be honest. If you have a long car, when you start going up hills, it's very, very difficult, very difficult. <laughs> this thing can walk up walls. <laughs> This year, just to get around the course, make sure the car uh, performs reliably. Once scrutineering is complete, 
everyone heads to driver's orientation and map giving. Um, in no particular order, there are elephants on this venue. At the moment, there's two herds on the venue. We will try and warn you by keeping a uh, lookout from the air and the control officers will try and warn you. Please bear safety in mind. I know half the day you won't even care about it and you'll stand under your car and please, please, we don't want anybody badly hurt. We have a very good medical backup here with helicopters and all that jazz, but we don't want to use them. Very good luck. Have a good day. It's a very short course. It's a very easy course. <laughs> uh, you've never had it so short. I'm getting old and soft. So please, have a good day and we'll see you back here tomorrow evening. Your maps are available from Belinda back there. The secret coordinates are now revealed and each team must get to work deciding how they will attack. The task at hand is to chart a viable course that will hit each of the 12 checkpoints and return to the start checkpoint within the 10 hour limit. The team that does it in the shortest distance wins. Confused and not good, but getting there, hopefully. This is the hardest part of the whole charge apart from tomorrow. And also there's no fun because we're all too nervous to really, can't think clearly. Can you imagine man went to the moon with the same technology? 7, 8, 2.8, 2 watts, 2 sit This is tough. This is hard. It's very hard. I think what you're saying is from here to here first. We finish the gauntlet, okay? The pressure is on. Teams have spent months raising money to enter and prepare their cars. Big day dawns tomorrow, and there's no knowing who will make it round the course and who won't. Dawn the next day, and the teams are escorted to their starting positions. Once at their starting positions, everyone waits anxiously for the 7.30 shotgun start. It's like Bloody Mary's at dawn with six cars about to take off down a slope that's better to roll down than drive down. <laughs> well, I think uh, the terrain is a bit worrying. I mean, looking out there, how high up we are. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of hills. We're going to now that we're up here, we're going to try and stay up here. Yeah. Well, the bit that looked easy looks pretty <laughs> steep, so I don't know about the rest of it. But yeah, we'll see. We've got to come down that ridge, and that looks near 45 degrees. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> And finally, it's time to charge. Cars go their separate ways as they follow their own course. There are many traps waiting. Meanwhile, cars are also starting at the Greensteads checkpoint. Everyone seems to want to take the same path. But it looks like car 56 is having problems already. Car 29, in usual form, overtakes leaving 56 behind. The first breakdown of the day, and the charge only just started. While car 56 is immobilized, car 48 is coming into Greensteads at the rate of knots. Next, we're going to Brookhouse. I told you, yeah, over that way there. The valley between Greensteads and Brookhouse is full of obstacles. This rock riverbed is just one of them. Most teams will try to avoid crossing it if they can, like car 61 coming in over the hill. But the shortest distance between the two checkpoints is over the riverbed. And even shorter is a bottleneck, 
further down that can destroy a car in seconds. Team 48 decides to attempt a higher crossing. The beauty of a modified car with clearance is illustrated here. By strategically placing their tires using rocks as ramps, Team 48 dances across in no time. Further down the river, Team 17 finds themselves right at the bottleneck. Well, until here we were doing pretty well, but I think we're going to be snagged unless we can... We haven't done enough checkpoints. This unmodified land cruiser doesn't have a lot of clearance, but it is light. To get through the charge in an unmodified car takes real teamwork and incredible bush skills. Over the riverbed, but now straight into the bottleneck. Doesn't matter, they are not about to give up. They are the first team to attempt this. It's all or nothing for these girls. Now, so we've got to go. Bye, you've had go, go. As car 17 gets on to their next checkpoint, Team USA has just arrived. Challenging, very challenging. Well, easy, you know, crossing a lot of these rivers in between, uh, you know, very rocky. It's not easy. You've got to take it very slowly. It's mid morning now, and things are happening at the gauntlet. The gauntlet comprises several closely placed checkpoints in a difficult area. If you can't make it through the gauntlet, you're not going to win. While car number two is laying on its side, everyone else is trying their best to stay upright. between everyone but uh, it's the beginning everyone's getting tired now so there won't be any aggravation <laughs> in the middle of all the action it's easy to forget why the rhino charge exists but without the charges Kenya's water towers would not be protected Two thousand and twelve marks the Kenyan government's water catchment management initiative. Rhino Ark, Kenya Wildlife Service, 
Kenya Forest Service and fence line communities have joined together to begin construction of the two new fences, one around Mount Kenya and the other around Mount Iburu of the Mao Forest Complex. In June, the first fence post of the Mount Kenya fence was planted. By October, nine kilometers have been built. The Mount Kenya Management Committee meets regularly to monitor the fence progress. A few members of the team were part of the Abadair fence building project. I started building the Abadair fence in 1989 and we completed in 2009. Nothing changes, it's the same. In fact, it's the same terrain here. It's, the, it's, uh, it's also a, a water tower. The 270,000 hectares of Mount Kenya is home to about 2,000 elephant in a diverse array of flora and fauna. Fence line communities farm and graze their cattle right on the forest boundary. The electric fence will halt crop destruction and other threats from wildlife. It will also put a stop to human activities such as illegal logging and deforestation, allowing the vast forests of Mount Kenya, one of Kenya's greatest natural assets and critical water towers, to be protected and managed for posterity. Back at the gauntlet, spectators are getting their thrills following the action. Every year, people come from far and wide to watch this extraordinary event. Everyone, from spectators to participants, contribute to the cause and to conservation in general. Rhino Ark gives camping fees and entrance fees to the hosting community amounting to millions of shillings that goes into community-based conservation projects in their area. Car 49 makes easy work of a river crossing that has caught a few by surprise. As Car 45 figures out how to get out of the river, on the other side of the gauntlet, Car 43 is struggling. Read my t-shirt. It's a bugger. It may be a bugger for car 43, but it's even more of one for car 45. This year's course may be short, but it's proving to be more difficult than ever expected, catching many teams by surprise.